Fox on stream. I can't even pronounce it right. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in this game. Zoro Box has been one of my uh, favorite decks to come back to for fun every once in a while during uh, the course of its life. You know, we've talked so much about rotation at this tournament, and it's one last ride for Zoro Box at this event as well. You know, that Zorark is going to rotate out of the standard format. Has just truly one of the coolest abilities in the game. That Phantom Transformation allowing you to swap it with a stage one Pokemon from your discard pile. Um, if you viewing at home have never seen Zoro Box in action, as it is called, trust me, you are in for a treat in this one. Paul's not going to make it easy, though. Playing that Charizard EX deck yep. is very, very powerful, very, very standard. But just because something is standard and regular does not mean it's not good and wants to just get an invite using Charizard EX. And I mean, I've got some good news here for Paul. Things are <laughs> going to get a lot easier next rotation once we rotate. Yeah, Charizard is pretty strong right now, and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Based on the results we've seen from Japan, based on what you know, people's early testing has looked like thus far, Charizard is going to be pretty strong in the post-rotation format. Now, Paul did get a top 32 finish at the Charlotte Regional Championships to start off this year back in January, of course, playing the Charizard, and we'll see if he's able to continue to make that happen. <laughs> no way, man. Sorry, I got a... Uh... Paul showing off to the crowd a little bit. Yeah, getting, yeah playing uh, it up for the crowd. Getting love to see it. Showing, he, showing he's got it. All right, I see you, Paul. Prize Let's see if, going uh, out. see if he can keep that uh, that confidence here going to this match. I mean, you might lose a little bit of confidence once you are uh, going up against Zora Box. So let's take a look at these prizes. Big to see that Flapple in the prize cards. That is one of your attackers that you can use without that reversal energy. Yeah, just one single colorless energy can use that Acid Mucus. Yeah, definitely not something you love to see in the prize cards, but not too big of a deal. Paul on the other end did prize the Luminion, which could come up, could be a factor. Also a boss's orders in the prizes, but it is at the bottom. He'll likely take it pretty early on. Nothing too detrimental, I think, for either of these players. A Curlia for Kobe, um, you know, that's a pretty important card. It's the draw engine of this deck. It utilizes Ralts, Curlia, and then that Buddy Catch Glade. Gonna be a lot happening here in this one, Ethan. I'm excited to, to get to walk through it with you and see exactly what happens in this game. Let's get into it. The anticipation is building up. Paul up against Kobe. The winner locks up a spot into day two of the Vancouver Regional Championships. And I'm going to leave a lot of this to you, Chip, because <laughs> this is not a matchup that I've practiced a lot. You know, I play a lot of Pokemon it's TCG. It's been a little while since I've played Zoro Box, to be honest. But, you know, there was a few formats ago where I would, you know, queue it up on TCG Live, try to get my daily quests done, you know, uh, cash in on my crystals that you get every single day. Uh, but, yeah, we're kicking things off, and here we go. Kobe playing that level ball. Zorua start with a Ralts on the bench. Facing down Paul's Charmander. And instantly going to check all of these one-off Pokemon that are in the deck. The whole point of this deck chip, what does it do? What is, I mean, look, Zoroark yeah. has that fandom transformation ability. It changes the stage ones. What's so good about changing into a different Pokemon? Yeah, what's really cool about this deck, is it's tr really a true toolbox style deck where you change what you do based on what matchup you are playing against. So in this specific matchup, Kobe's going to be aiming to use Scovillain. It's super spicy breath attack, I believe. Yep. Uh, able to deal 90 damage. But if you have a fire energy attached to that Pokemon, it deals 90 more damage. So it can one-hit KO a Charizard EX as it is a Grass-type Pokemon. Now, you might be wondering, how do you get a Fire Energy on this Pokemon? It also requires Grass Energy for its attack. And the way you're going to do that is through the Reversal Energy, an energy card that is extremely powerful, but it only gets its powerful effect when you are behind on prize cards, when your opponent has more, uh, fewer prize cards remaining than you do. It provides three energy cards of any type when attached to an Evolution Pokemon. So... Kobe's going to get these Zoroarks into play. He's going to get those key Pokemon for this matchup into the discard pile and then use Zoroark's Phantom Transformation, swap into whatever the new Pokemon needs to be, and hopefully take multi-prize KOs and, uh, and jump ahead in the prize trade at the very end. Solid first turn for Kobe. Looking good for Paul as well as he starts this turn off. Does have a little bit of a gift from Kobe there that Artisan can grab. One of these numerous non-rule box basic Pokemon out of the deck. Already Rotom will be the selection, it seems. Maybe just looking through to see all these Pokemon to get grabbed. Uh, you also sort of have to be aware of 
uh, something if there's some sort of like lightning Pokemon in this deck. Now, Kobe is not playing anything. I know there's a, a Jolteon in this deck that can sometimes hit some of yeah, these lightning yeah, yeah. weak Pokemon, but uh, Kobe decided I'm not going to cover all of my bases. I'm just going to cover the important ones. Luckily, is playing that Scoville, villain, and it is in the deck here for Kobe. Yeah, not in the prize cards. That's something that definitely is a little risky of uh, when building the Zoro box deck. You have a lot of really important evolution Pokemon, but you don't ever really want to play more than one of them because they're only useful in certain matchups. So you run a little bit of a risk that that key card could be prized at the time that you need it. We do see, like we mentioned at the start, that Flapple in the prizes, kind of just a vanilla good attacker into just about anything, into most matchups. Um, but yeah, Paul getting pretty set up here with the Battle VIP Pass, and I'm pretty sure there's actually a second one in the hand as well. Oh, wow, an excellent start. They even have a supporter card to back this up. So we'll see how Paul builds his board up. Now, usually against a Zoroark deck, just attacking over and over again can sometimes actually not be a winning That's strategy. True. How do you think Paul should approach the pacing and build this board up, or yeah. is there not much you can really do to play around things? Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how Paul approaches this. You have to assume he has not tested against Zoro Box very much, if at all. It might be something you run into on the TCG Live ladder every once in a while when you're practicing. Um, yeah, we'll see exactly how he wants to piece things together. You do, you definitely have to attack at some point. You've got to do something. Um, Paul is not playing something like the Lost City. That's one way that you can kind of respond to the Zoro Box deck. If you could Lost City the Sco Villain, you know that your Charizards in the future could be safe. Honestly, if uh, Paul wanted to try to make a call that Kobe does not play something like the Jolteon that you mentioned that can one-hit KO Pidgeot. I'd actually like to see Paul try to attack with that Pidgeot itself. It's got a solid attack. It deals 120 damage and can take knockouts on most things that Kobe puts into play. Yeah, that was the thought process I had is just if you're not playing that lightning attacker, you can sometimes take a lead and your opponent is sort of unable to deal with it. I but mean, it's difficult for Paul to make that call, having not sure. seen Kobe's list. He doesn't have perfect knowledge that there's no Jolteon hanging around. So if he runs into Kobe's active Pokemon with a Pidgeot, there is a world where it could just get KO'd right away by a Jolteon with a reversal energy, and then you lose your Quick Search Pidgeot. That's the risk about playing a deck you don't have a lot of a practice against, you don't have a lot of information on. It will just be building the hand up with that Rotom, instant charge to end the turn off. That's Kobe, just able to use Artisan once again, more than happy to have the Stadium card in play. Yeah, and Kobe, like I mentioned, is really gonna be relying on reversal energy in this game, so he wants to give up prize cards. He wants Paul to jump ahead. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Kobe let Paul take a couple of prize cards, and especially in this instance where, like we mentioned, that Flapple is prized. That is the one way you can be probably a little aggressive. He also does have one double turbo energy, but you really want to save that for the end of the game. Pretty often the way that the Zoro Box finishes games out is with that slow bro. When your opponent has just one prize card remaining, you use that attack and you just get to take two prizes. So as long as you get down to that point, you know, with all these single prize Pokemon in play and make it so your opponent has just that one prize card left and you can get down to two at the same time, you can close out and get a guaranteed win. And a really tough draw actually drew into that Scoville and the Pokemon you want in the discard pile. If Kobe had just saved that refinement and played the Iono first, would have been able to discard that off refinement. We'll now have to rely on something like uh, an Ultra Ball maybe to Find these Pokemon back. He's only playing two yeah. copies of that he's card, got, though. He's got time to do it. You know, he's, he's not super pressured to do it immediately. He is going to want to respond to a Charizard when it comes up. But, yeah, like we said, he's just going to kind of play this patient waiting game. A big guard for Kobe as well is going to be the Arezu, a pretty uncommon supporter card. We don't see it too often, but it uh, lets you search your deck for three evolution Pokemon that do not have a rule box and put them into your hand. And so maybe that's what Kobe was thinking by going for the refinement, give himself a chance to draw the Arezu, then he can find the Scoville and he can find the Curlias to continue to set his board up. Pretty solid hand here. Does actually have the Ultra Ball already in combination with this Pidgeot. Here we go. And there is that rare candy in hand too. So a quick search is online. And I think the question here now for Paul, what do you want to do with this? Yeah, just make sure you shovel the deck up if you're not going to use that quick search ability. Yeah. And this is really interesting because there is a collapse stadium, which I mean, in my mind, I value as a pretty solid resource. And maybe limiting your opponent's bench a little bit in combination with something like Iono to try and yeah. maybe get them off their pacing, but they will just be discarded with that Professor's Research, drawing into seven cards, and with that rare candy, plus potentially an Ultra Ball in the hand, 
We will be able to see a Charizard EX come out. Yeah. And, uh, Oh, just Mysterious Tail. Okay, we, yeah. we didn't see the research yet. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the six yeah, cards from the Mysterious Tail. <laughs> yeah. So, was well, finding the rare candy and then now can use the quick search. That's really smart sequencing as well from Paul. Used the Ultra Ball, got the Pidgeot, used rare candy into the Pidgeot. Could have used quick search, but wisely choosing to use Mysterious Tail first. See what you find. And if you get a rare candy or an Ultra Ball, you can go get whichever other piece you need off the quick search from Pidgeot. And we are seeing everything get played for Seal Stone, quick search. Grabbing boss's orders and that rare and that Charizard EX. So now maybe putting aggression onto either this Curlia in play or the yeah. Zoroark. What and would you go after? I think I like KOing the Curlia. This deck really struggles to get things going if you don't have your Curlia set up and into play. Let's see if Paul does choose to target that down. We'll go for the collapsed right away. And sure enough, Curlia able to be brought up. I wouldn't have hated to see the, the hold of the Collapse Stadium kind of for the reason that you were mentioning, Ethan, but it's not terrible to just get that Rotom out of play while you have the Collapsed in hand. Not at all, not at all. They have a choice for Kobe. Do you try and go for a Scoville in play? Now, you do have information that that Scoville is at the bottom of your deck. It's true. Speaking of which, though, do you see the Ultra Ball in the hand? Yeah, I that, think he's got the Zinnia's yeah. Resolve in hand as well, so that's a way that he could get rid of the Scoville in this turn. Ultra Ball to go get it, and then Zinnia's Resolve, get rid of that, discard it, and draw more cards. Kobe will probably play it slow here, honestly, this turn. I, I think we'll probably see him just set up a little bit. Might as well get the Scoville in the discard pile, of course. Um, yeah, just try to reestablish this board, get yourself another Curlia in play. One is in the prize cards. You would like to get the other Curlia back from the discard pile. He's got a couple ways to do that with Super Odd and Clara. But yeah, starting off by getting the Skull Villain into hand and probably playing the Zinnia's Resolve. Yeah, and if you really need to, you can always use that, Philton, that Phantom Transformation and put yourself into a Curlia as well. You can. It's really tough to do that, though. If you have to, you, you know, you got to do what you got to do, of course. But... Um, your Zoroarks are just so, so valuable. It looks like Kobe may have to do just that right now, though. Needs to continue to get set up. It'll be Battle VIP Pass hitting the discard pile. And this hand is just filled with energy cards. Look at that. I think there's <laughs> yeah. four or five energy cards in this hand. Just going to be a pass. And it looks like Paul may find an opening with Quick Search Online. Could we just see another aggression out here for Paul? Yeah, I really like this line as Paul just try to get rid of those Curlias and make things as difficult as possible for Kobe so that later on in the game as Paul, when you're going for your own Ionos, um, it, Kobe's just really, really limited. I mean, another thing as well is that you can cut Kobe off from getting to the Gallade. That is a big part of this deck, being able to use that buddy catch every single turn in order to get a supporter card into your hand and Paul recognizing this going after the Curlias. Yeah, I, I really like the way Paul has approached the matchup so far. And this has nothing going on in Kobe's hand. Five wow. energy cards, Mana Feast, Super Rod. The game is just slipping away. Paul identifying the importance of going after the support line. It's just going to be a Super Rod, and I don't even think we can see anything else here from Kobe. Yeah, Kobe's not going to be out of it just yet. You know, if your opponent takes three prize cards, it is okay. You can still win. You just have to go for two, two, and then close things out with the Slowbro. But it's going to definitely be a clock. Kobe needs a top deck this coming turn. Otherwise, the game might be out of his reach. Wow. This is sort of what can happen with these unconventional decks sometimes. We're just going to see a turn pass over. And Ultra Ball can mean a second Charizard EX can come into play if there are enough energy cards. But I actually do not think there are because of double retreating this Mew yep. earlier on in the game. Yeah, it's how things go whenever you're only playing six fire energy. It's become the norm in the Charizard deck, and it's usually totally fine, but you got to be mindful of exactly how things work out. Even just attaching the one energy is okay. Obviously, Paul has an attacker already set up in this active spot. You get the other Charizard set up on the bench, so all you need to do now is attach from hand, and what do you know? There already was an energy in hand, and he cleans things up with the professor's research. No high five from these players for the empty hand research. We're taking things a little bit seriously here on the stage. The most serious Zoroark box matchup we've maybe ever <laughs> as seen serious on the stream. As you can see <laughs> a Zoro box deck, yes. These guys are locked in right now. You, you can see Kobe, he's got that expression on, but it's sort of a mix, right? You've got to be focused. You've also got to really acknowledge you're not drawing into All anything. Right. And here we go, big time top deck. He needs something here. Otherwise the game may That's, just be over and... Yeah. You can yeah. see it on his face. He's just, I, I think he just scooped, yep. 
Smart decision there from Kobe. I mean, it's yeah. not like the game would have lasted that much longer. It's pretty tough to win from that position. There is a theoretical world as Kobe where you can play to an end game of getting slow bro in play and then counter catcher something up that's hard for your opponent to move. And then you Iono them and then you take slow bro and you use it a couple times in a row. But it's such a slim chance. I think Kobe recognizes his better shot to win in this match is going to be if he concedes game one and has plenty of time for a game two and game three. Kobe's deck just failed to function during that mid game. Once these Curlias were put under pressure, yeah, just was not able to establish multiple. But Zinnia's resolve, just finding a bunch of energy cards, super powerful, allowed him to draw five cards from the hand. And it was just that constant aggression. Boss's orders going after Curlia. Just left Kobe yeah. with an unplayable hand. And as the Zoro Box player, it's annoying when your opponent is KOing your Curlias, but if you can get a couple in play at once, you can withstand that, because you at least have another one. You can get Gallade as well, and that helps you kind of mitigate some of that pressure from your opponent. But Kobe only ever able to get one Curlia at a time really made Paul's decisions pretty easy. Okay, they're putting on the replay too. Let's go. He's uh, showing us. Hey, look, if you can back that talk up there, there you go. <laughs> I like it here. Five Pokemon the prize cards. Yeah. Flapple yet again in the prizes as well as that Buddy Catch Gallade. Yeah, that, that Gallade is definitely the big deal here. Buddy Catch is super important for this deck in the later turns. It lets you get out of Iono. It lets you find Iono when you need it. It lets you find a Rezu to discard key support Pokemon or key attacking Pokemon. It lets you find your Curlias. Uh, yeah, prize and Gallade definitely going to be tough here for Kobe. We'll see what he pieces together. Prize cards now going out for Paul. Nothing too bad. A couple Pokemon, a rare candy. Prizing a rare candy can be extremely annoying with Charizard, but if there's a time to prize a candy, it's going to be against a slower deck like Kobe's. You're not going to mind it nearly as much. Oh, wow. Just benching Ralts and passing the turn over to Paul, who's oh, going no. second in this position. And <laughs> You need to have a better start than that for sure. I, I think Paul is even considering playing this Artisan down. Honestly, I mean, I I'm surprised to see Kobe choosing to go first here. I feel like mm. you would want to go second in this matchup for a few reasons, right? I mean, you don't care about your opponent taking the early KO. You want to give yourself an opportunity to play a supporter to get set up. And also the Charizard deck is so weak if it doesn't find a bunch of Pokemon on turn one. And one of the key cards to find is Battle VIP Pass. And one of the key ways to find Battle VIP Pass is the Arvin. So by allowing Paul to go second, you're really increasing his opportunity to, to get a better setup. Let's see how this plays out. There is the Mew Mysterious Tale. Do we see a battle VIP pass? And we do. That changes the whole dynamic of Paul's second turn setup. Can play that battle VIP pass. Find Rotom. Instant charge is now online. And he can get things set up. Get a as Pidgey he into play to. as yeah. well. I mean, that is just excellent from Paul. Really things setting up like a dream here. You can see why he wants to get all of his championship points this season with Charizard X. When things come together like this, it's hard to argue against ever playing something besides this deck and can follow wow. this up with a lost vacuum. I believe just that one copy playing lost vacuum. I think he does, uh, he does have play two. two, but, but that yeah, is a that huge is... find. And look at this hand. There is a Zinnia's Resolve, but okay. there's no level ball, no other way to put Zerua's into play. Hey, this is totally fine, though. We get the skill villain in the discard pile. He finds a level ball, at least, and another Zerua. This is, this is honestly okay for Kobe. Like I said earlier, this is a deck where you're okay falling behind. Your opponent is going to get ahead in the prize trade. You just need to respond eventually and get to a point where you can get yourself set up. So Kobe here... Finding the one Curlia at least, he definitely wants to try to get another Ralts in play if he can, though. Hand at this point is really not allowing it, though. And now there's four Battle VIP pass in the deck that cannot yeah, it's be true. played. Another Every reason to matters. go second, honestly. You're, you're yourself more likely to find Battle VIP pass. Yeah, being able to play that supporter card, seeing more cards, a big deal when it comes to setting your board up. Let's see what happens here, though. We do see Curlia, refinement, getting rid of this Cleavor. It does get some more basic Pokemon into play. You're more than happy to play that down. We'll most likely see just another Ralts come down into play. There is still a few of those left. There was one in the prize cards, though, and it is a 3-3-1 three, three, line right. of this Curlia, Ralts, and Gallade. So at minimum gets this down. Not yeah. a terrible turn for Kobe, but uh, this is sort of the same way this first game opened up. It's true. So we'll, we'll have to see, see what if, happens. Yeah, yeah, if two games in a row can Paul pull off the turn two boss's orders KO on Curlia. Really not something I would say is super likely to happen. And I don't quite think his hand is capable of pulling it off at the moment. 
He's got a rare candy already, and we know uh, it looks like there was the forest seal stone as well. He's got Mysterious Tail Mew, so depending on what that finds, maybe something could happen. May come down to this Mew. Thinning the deck out, grabbing Manaphy. I'm not sure uh, yeah. there's any Pokemon that hit that's, the bench in this situation. That's but. probably Paul just trying to cover all his bases, yeah. right? You never know what your opponent could pull out with the Zoro box deck. The Mew Mysterious Tail doesn't really find too much useful. Countercatcher not really going to be good in this matchup. Your opponent is the one who's going to be behind. And, of course, Battle VIP Pass, pretty useless. Either of these cards being grabbed will just be for, you know, Ultra Ball fodder more than likely. <laughs> it is technically an item, Kobe. It is technically an item. As Forest Sealstone can come down to Rotom. And with the way this hand works out, I don't actually think there's a way to get Pidgeot and Charizard into play. Uh, we are going to see Rare Candy Pidgeot, but, yeah. I mean, Pidgeot can maybe grab something like an Iono and disrupt this hand a little bit, shuffle that down. You've still got the chance to find Rare Candy Charizard. Maybe it might be Paul's best play in this position. I mean, going for Arvin now really doesn't warrant you a lot because you're yeah. not going to have the pieces as it stands. Yeah, Paul's probably going to end the turn with just using Rotom, use that instant charge. You don't have to go for the knockout this turn, but I actually think that was the research grabbed off the quick search. Not having to discard too many important resources in the hand. He doesn't mind going for this play, and it could pay off. It could lead to an attack. It is definitely true that you want to try to be aggressive when you can uh, against this deck. You know, the more time you give the Zoro box deck, the better it is for it. So, you know, taking a quick knockout can be nice. Force your opponent to have the response right away. We will see the energy come down onto that Heat Tackle Charmander and can Lost Vacuum again <laughs> to get rid of that Artisan. Uh, as we are going to see Professor's Research now, as I mentioned, if these rare seven candy cards Charizard. find uh, Rare Candy Charizard, there's Ultra Ball yeah. and a Charizard, but missing the key Rare Candy. Still a very solid hand for next turn. And again, it's, it's okay to not take prize cards because you're not really activating any big attacks, especially because Kobe has once again prized that flapple and yeah kobe never even if kobe had the flapple i don't think he's wanting to yeah. go on the aggressive here you want to be behind on prizes you want to use the reversal energies it's really one of the more important things and i think paul is going to recognize yeah counter catcher is normally a pretty powerful card but i can afford to discard on this ultra ball my opponent is going to be the one who wants to play from behind we'll make things a lot easier next turn fighting that charmeleon meaning no rare candy necessary it could even end the turn off with instant charge End it off with a massive hand size. Put himself yeah. in a solid position to do the same play we saw last game. Evolve into Charizard. Boss his orders up Curlia and try and shut down this refinement engine that Kobe is trying to establish. And speaking of trying to establish the refinement engine, we do see the Arezu being found that can get three evolution Pokemon out of the deck, find another Curlia. Would probably grab Gallade if it was available, uh, just in order to get into it in the future turn, but is probably just going to grab something else to discard. Yeah, Zorobox actually got a little bit of a sneaky buff with the recent Paldean Fates expansion. The newest card in this deck is that Camerupt here. It's attack Cinder Cannon dealing 120 damage, and then you may choose to discard a Fighting Energy attached to it, which of course is powered up by the Reversal Energy. And then if you do, it does 120 more damage. So 240, just a really strong vanilla attacker. But also you can just use Cinder Cannon for 120 in certain matchups, so pretty cool. <laughs> Fall having to read that Wug Trio, I had to maybe look at that one again when it starts <laughs> off. So uh, now Paul's got to be just a little bit cautious of the deck size how many cards are available yeah it is something that could come into play that undersea tunnel at the very end of the game you know kobe can maybe capitalize on paul not quite keeping track of resources playing you know a few too many supporters you don't really see charizard get down to a low deck size too often so probably won't be much of a factor here but always something you got to keep in mind third zorua coming into play it will probably just be passing the turn back over. I think already did pass, oh, Paul, even yeah. uh, drawing for turn and actually counting Kobe's deck, which is uh, pretty interesting here. And kind of count his own deck. Now, th there is one thing that uh, Zoro Box can struggle with, and that is like your opponent just doing nothing, really. Uh, you don't have anything to really be aggressive with. You can be aggressive, like we mentioned, with the Flapple. That is in the prizes right now for Kobe. So Paul is going to consider all the options here. You know, if he just passes for a few turns, what can Kobe really do about it? And especially, you know, Paul probably considering 
the rules of the tournament as well. You know, he won game number one. If this game number one didn't complete, you know, if they just passed back and forth for, you know, however many turns it took, didn't end up finishing the game, Paul would be the one who came away the victor. So there it is, Iono getting played. So actually not going with boss's orders, just going to disrupt the fairly large hand that Kobe spent last turn building up. Of course, grabbed all those evolution Pokemon, used a few refinement abilities, and had built it up also by using the Zinnia's Resolve earlier on. So it's just going to be the Mew Mysterious Tail as one of the final actions. We haven't even seen Quick Search get used yet, I believe. So maybe just trying to build up a following turn while going and just adding a little bit of disruption right now. So we'll see what this warrants. Yeah, let's see what Paul decides to take here or if he decides to take anything. You know, with counting the opponent's deck, maybe there's a world where you just take nothing and leave as many cards in your own deck. But it looks like he is going to continue to just play things normally. Uh, it does it, like you mentioned, have Quick Search still available, which we see being used now. It will just be an Ultra Ball. So could put another Charizard EX into play. Yep. It's not a bad option necessarily. You've got to be careful about how many Pokemon you put into play that can get one hit knocked out by something like the Scovillain. And this is going to be the Collapse Stadium, getting rid of Rotom and taking the knockout. All right, now we'll see what Kobe's able to pull off. A pair of Curlia in play. He's got the Zorark in the active spot. Reversal energy in the hand. Are we going to see that Scovillain come out and take a big one-hit KO? Starting the turn off with that, uh, that Oz Arezu. My bad, sorry. Got to get used to saying some of these <laughs> new Pokemon names. Yeah, no. Not one that we have uh, really spoken about very much, that card. We'll grab that Zorark. So second Zorark coming into play. As well as grabbing that Mighty Yenna. Now it is there for that UV Max matchup. But That's true. It will just be sort of some discard fodder at this point. Even has things like Battle VIP Pass that can go away. These are great cards to get discarded later on. Yeah, we'll you want to just choice. get these out of the deck. So in the future, when your opponent starts using their own Iono, those are not things you're going to be drawing into. As another Artisan comes down to the play, I think both players are actually playing this gold Artisan card. So it's kind of hard to keep track of who's who at this point. And yep. it will be the Mew coming into play. So an interesting card. Does synergize very well with Kobe playing these jet energies that we've seen in this hand. Yep. And it actually synergizes really well with the Thornton that Kobe plays as well. Kind of an unconventional inclusion in this Zoro box deck, but it's a way you can create another Zorark uh, as a surprise. You know, that Mew stays in play. And here it is, Super Spicy Breath. Goodbye, Charizard and Scovillain. Let's Kobe jump ahead in the prize trade. Action back on Paul. And we'll start things off with an Artisan, just checking through the deck to see what is available. And I think a play Paul could consider he tackle. Yeah, I was Are about to say. About that? Yeah, he's got that Defiance Band on the Charmander on the bench. Yeah, that could come up and just as a little one prize Pokemon, take a knockout here, dealing 60 damage and then times two for the weakness of the Scovillain. I'm not sure, though, if Paul can create a board where, I mean, it's tough, right? You even things up, but I mean, Charizard taking a knockout, it's still the same situation, right? You're yeah, your opponent you're can't not use Scovillain either. Out. Yeah, but I mean, you know, capitalize on the Charmander while you can. I guess there is a world where Kobe could knock it out with something like the, the Flapple, right? We know it's prized, Paul doesn't. Um, but yeah, I think at this point, Kobe's gotten the board established. Paul's probably best shot is just to knock out plus disrupt, knock out plus disrupt and see where things go from there. I guess also this turn, since you're only going to take one prize card, you're going to be tied on prizes. Maybe this is when you could use a boss's orders and KO a Curlia, do it on, on this exact turn. But it looks like we're not going to see Paul go that route. So three fire energy going back into the deck with the super rod. Radiant Charizard on the bench is pretty interesting. Yeah, the Radiant Charizard would have to be forced to be knocked out by something like the Camerupt if Flapple is not available. Yeah. I mean, you can use actually a pretty wide variety. You can even use the Swirling Slice on the Glade, which does yeah. 160 to knock it out. Uh, you can use uh, Mighty Enna to knock it out. So you have options, but they're a little bit more costly, and they're not a great thing to put a reversal energy onto because if your opponent gusts around it, it can be tough. So we will just see the Iono played. And it looks like the Charmander is getting Here in we there. Go. Yep. He's powered up. He's encouraged. 
Listen, Charmander can get in there too. I know some people like Charmander more than Charizard. What about you, Chip? Are you? I are mean, you Charizard's my favorite Pokemon. Okay, buddy, so. well there, there you go then. So maybe, uh, maybe <laughs> you Charmander see this was. Charizard. You know, the reason is because you know Charmander is the first starter. Right? You know, back in the day, but uh, so you know Charmander's got a soft spot in the heart as well. But uh, yeah, Kobe getting things going with a super odd to recover. Now, one thing that's a little bit of a bummer that Thornton got put to the bottom of the deck. That's the way that he can you know swap this Mew out. But if we see that Buddy Catch Gallade come into play. You know, Mew can be swapped into a Zorark seemingly out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, like we mentioned as well, another thing to consider for Kobe is he's not behind on prizes. He can't really do much this turn. He just is fine. Sending up the Mew, it does something, and it can get KO'd, and it's not that big of a deal. Kobe does at least here want to find another Zerua to put onto the bench, which I think this level ball has accomplished for him. Yeah, and the Artisan, I believe, has not been used yet. So can true use as well, the Artisan yeah. to just get both of these Zeruas out into play. And has yet to use that mysterious tail as well. Yeah, and, and Kobe, I think, is just perfectly happy to pass this turn over. If the Muse knocked out, that's an open bench space for you to replace it with something better. And if the Curly is targeted, well, you've got that Thornton play like you mentioned the following turn. So lots of really good options and even going to play an Iono to disrupt a little bit and build this hand up. Still has access to the tail and this refinement. We'll just see the battle VIP pass. So maybe just trying to grab all the bad item cards out because if your hand is built up enough, you'd rather not draw into those off of something like Iono. Yep, exactly. Don't want to find those later on and even has refinement still to utilize. See two more cards, another Ultra Ball, another Counter Catcher, and yeah, pass. Pretty solid turn, honestly, for Kobe. It's such a stark contrast from what we're used to seeing in the Pokemon TCG where it's like you have to build up to a knockout every single turn. Kobe is playing much more of a slower-paced setup game, setup play style. Paul doing the exact opposite. It's kind of what you got to do. Rush this deck down. Target these bench support Pokemon and hope the Iono sticks. And step one of that plan, build up attacker. Step two, play boss's orders to bring up your opponent's support Pokemon. It will be that Curlia. And the fire energy potentially attached to this Charmander. Now, the biggest issue here is right now Charmander is doing... 30. Okay, we're going to see another yeah. heat tackle I, I here. I was going to suggest that this is something that Kobe, or sorry, Paul can do as well. That is pretty annoying for Kobe. Yeah, um, the Curlia being brought to the active, pretty annoying to get out of that active spot. You have to attach retreat or, you know, make it become the Gallade or just leave it up here until it eventually gets KO'd. Uh, of course, I guess Kobe does play the Jet Energies. Can't forget that. Uh, so that is something that could be a factor. But with that, Flapple being prized, I mean, this is something that's going to buy Paul some time. And this board looks great. You've got all these Zoroarks in play, but it's just going to be a pass back over to Paul, it seems. So Charmander, the Charmander that could at this point, just <laughs> heat tackling it away. But, I mean, four more heat tackles, and it's going to be taking itself down from That's exhaustion. It's a, it's a good point. Yeah, it does take that little bit of recoil every single turn. Uh, but, you know, Paul's, we, we got time to figure that out. That, that's probably why we're seeing the other Charmander be set up. We're, we're, it's not a Charizard deck anymore. We're Charmander <laughs> gamers out here. Hey, the Charizard is on the bench, all right? Lots of special Charizard, <laughs> so it's not quite the... Oh, I guess both of them, though, are, are that um, special Charizard. If you have the Paldean Fates one, of course, is that shiny Charizard. So. True, yeah. Got a whole mix of Charizard fans. I mean, it's no wonder that you like this deck if you're a Charizard <laughs> fan. It's got, it got all the, the Charmander Charizard fan service in here. People love Charizard for good, re good measure. Super Odd will shuffle back in the Charmeleon. I mean, that's a way that... You can pressure these Curlias a little bit more. Yeah. Take a knockout. I mean, the way this sets up is that Paldean Fates Termeleon. I think it's doing enough here to take this knockout. Yeah, it does deal 50 damage with combustion. So that will take this KO. It actually works out pretty nicely here. It does have the fire energy in hand to make this the math work out pretty nicely. I think can potentially combine this with a, do you, it's like, do you want to disrupt this turn? I think this was honestly probably an okay turn to disrupt and try and force your opponent off of having the reversal energy. Instead, will just be the knockout combustion. I mean, these are first for me to say on stream here. <laughs> Paul really getting creative in how he tries to navigate through a pretty tricky matchup at that. Yeah, Kobe will use that artisan to grab out yet another Zerua. We could see it just a full board of these things. Definitely a solid position as a Zoro box player is to just have that many of them in play. Now the choice here for Kobe, do you want to go in and use that Phantom Transformation ability and attack into this Charmeleon? I think if you don't, you're going to have to eventually. So 
we will see that be used. And it is actually going to be into the Cleavor. All right. The route attack can deal 10 damage plus additional 30 damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. With a full bench, that's going to be more than enough to knock out this Charmeleon. Yeah, one of the nice things about attacking with Cleavor as well is that it's a Pokemon that can attack on the next turn. Reversal Energy, like even if Paul doesn't do anything, you know, just passes or something like that. Uh, the Reversal Energy is just a colorless energy, but you can just attach a Jet Energy or something else to this, and then you can use Route on subsequent turns. And uh, that's a way that you can kind of respond to your opponent trying to play around your normal strategy. You've always got to be aware of that Twilight Inspiration attack very true. on the slow, bro. That's what makes this whole deck turn, Chip. We haven't even talked about that here in the Zoroark deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely a big deal. That's kind of the main strategy that you use at the end of the game. You know, once Paul gets down to one single prize card remaining, that's what Kobe's going to do is swap into the slow, bro, and just use that Twilight Inspiration to take the last two prizes and win the game. Finally, Charizard comes back into play thanks to that rare candy card. We'll accelerate these fire energies. Yeah, let's see where they go. I, I would like to see these go onto the Pidgeot here. You haven't seen the Jolteon from your opponent just yet. Kobe had plenty of opportunity to discard it. There is a world where it's you know been prized and he just took it off the prizes. But yeah, as Paul here, try to attack with the thing that you know your opponent's going to have a harder time KOing. It doesn't knock out the Cleavor, obviously. But if you can combine it with a boss's orders to, say, bring up the... Curlia on the bench, you know, the thing we've been talking about being a good strategy this whole time. That could be a decent play here for Paul. Boss's orders take the knockout, and then next turn you go for the the Iono. And a big question, is there enough energy cards in this deck? We've he seen... He's going to be running low. I think both Super Odd, odd yeah, yeah, have been played at this point. See, these energies are sort of floating around right now. We'll see what the choice is for Paul to put these energies into play. He's got boss's orders in the hands. He's thinking about it, considering whether or not it's worth it to go for sort of this unconventional strategy to use this Pidgeot EX. I think you've got to go for it, Joe. I think it's your best strategy yeah, here if you can I, I put agree. yourself to one prize and then Iono that following turn. Paul here really taking a moment to think about where these energies go. There's a couple in the discard pile, so he maybe is thinking he doesn't have enough energy. Yeah, but with two in the discard pile and one already having been preemptively attached to the Radiant Charizard, which who knows, maybe that energy should not have gotten placed there. Uh, Pidgeot is actually not going to be a good attacker because then you have no way to attack with a Charizard later on in this game. Yeah, and I mean, you can put this Charmander into play, but it's going to do nothing but support your whole team at this point. That's right, yeah. I think just considering what to grab, it will be the boss's orders, and just going to thin the deck out with a little yep. bit with Artisan. So here we go. We are finally entering the end game here. This has been a long game, too. We've got 15 minutes left on the clock, so most likely either could be a tie between these players or Paul will win the set 2-0. And this is going to be a big turn. We're actually going to see the Radiant Charizard come up, and this is also a smart strategy here. The way the Cleavor math works, though, is it will still it does knock out exactly. this Charizard. And, and that's sort of the issue here. So a very heads-up play from Kobe to transform into the right Pokemon that no matter what situation, he'll still be dealing valuable damage and taking valuable prize cards. Yeah, as Kobe here, I think you'd want to try to put a Ralts into play. You even could afford to ch transform one of these Zoark into a Curlia. Um, but yeah, I think Kobe's game plan is pretty straightforward from this point. With three prize cards remaining, you take the one prize on this Radiant Charizard, and then if Paul takes just one more prize card at some point, you just Phantom Transform into the Slowbro and win the game. So there it is, transforming into the Curlia. Refinement will discard the Manaphy. And it does find an Azur as well as a Super Rod. Yeah. I'm not sure that that... Artisan has been used yet, so we could see Super Odd put back the Zoroark that just transformed into Curlia. Yeah, and putting Zoroark back is going to be better in this spot since he did choose to use the one Zoroark already for the Phantom Transformation. Uh, we could see a Zorua and a Zoroark go back, uh, and the, the Ralts as well. It's actually going to be just the Ralts, actually choosing not to put back any Zoroark pieces. I believe there's still a Curlia in the deck. Yeah. With how things treat. So it's all about this last turn, right? Kobe wants to put as little cards into the deck that are not reversal energies because right. that's pretty much what this game is going to come down to, it feels like. Ooh, Kobe actually using yet another Phantom Transformation Zork is going to preemptively put the Slowbro into play, wants to play around the potential Iono on Paul's end. 
a little risky. You know, that could get boss's orders in Lost City, potentially. Uh, you don't never know what these Charizard lists could have in them, but that's Kobe making a call that Paul just doesn't have that in his list. Yeah, it's weird. You don't need to close the game out with the Twilight Inspiration. That's true, that's true. You can always yeah. just transform into Scovillain. Scovillain. Right? Yeah, so. That's a good point. Here we go, Chip. We're having an interesting game, too, at this. Cleavor getting in there, taking a knockout with Rout. Kobe evening things up at two prize cards left, and this is where things are going to get exciting. Do a quick deck count, count, seeing how many cards are left. And the choice here, Chip, will it be Iono to disrupt Kobe's hand? I feel like that has to be it, right? It, it, it sounds like it, it could be an if, but there's the no thing world is, where he's not holding onto those pieces. Right? I mean, Paul is literally forced to not KO anything except this Slowbro, right? If he just KOs the active, Kobe has game on board. Promote Slowbro, Twilight Inspiration for the win. So, yeah, I think uh, Paul here is going to try to just play it slow for a turn. You know, he can pass this turn to close things out and then on the next turn try to use a boss's orders to KO this slow bro and just cross your fingers that Kobe doesn't have the reversal energy to get the skill villain KO with that Zoark. You definitely can't attack this Cleavor. If you attack the Cleavor, Kobe just wins the game. Yeah. So maybe like a stagger play could be okay. You play Iono this turn and then you play the boss's orders the following turn. Yeah, you gotta... I, th I think you have to knock it. Yeah, I guess that is true. You have to go for it now. It does give Kobe a turn to use the Curlia that's on the board. Yeah, I just, I feel like you've got to do this as quickly as possible, right? Because the more turns you give Kobe it's to true. refine, the more turns he's going to be getting rid of these cards that aren't reversal energies to win this game. Yeah, just the Arvin for the Ultra Ball and the pass. Kobe is picking up the pace here, kind of recognizing he's in a pretty solid spot, wants to do everything he can to close things out. And we do see that Buddy Catch Gallade being put out. Going to go for potentially a Professor's Research, just adding it to the hand. Not too many cards left in the deck, so I don't know if we're going to see the Research actually being played here. I think we're just burning cards out of the hand here. We're just going to see Curly get put into play. And now yeah. it feels like no matter what Paul does, this game is pretty much locked up. Yeah. You knock out the, the slow bro, well, then Kobe just goes and Buddy catches for Professor's Research, right? And then puts that in play. And with having two Reversal Energies left, Ooh, I believe. Wait, hold on for a second. Kobe used the Phantom Transformation. Well, was starting to use the Phantom Transformation. Is thinking twice about it. So he's going to choose not to, and we will just see that route. Deals 100 damage after the resistance on the Pidgeot. Yeah. So things are getting interesting. We see Kobe now the one attacking into this. And I think for Paul, you've got to kind of understand, you've got to do something here. Otherwise, enough route attacks around your board, yeah. and you're going to be getting knocked out or lose the game one way or the other. It There's seems. definitely not enough time for you to, to burn 10 minutes by just pivoting between a bunch of Pokemon that can tank hits from the Cleavor. I think the only thought process here is if you go into something like this Mew, could, I guess you don't really want to knock out this Pokemon as Kobe, though, because then it, on one prize card, you can't use reversal energy. So maybe right. this could be an okay, because then if but you... But you can yeah. use, there's already a reversal energy on the Slowbro, right? So you just need one more energy attached. And there also is the one copy of Double Turbo That's Energy. True. So it maybe would be the thing that Paul wants to do, you know, force Kobe to knock out this active Mew, go to one prize card. So reversal's not an out. Force him to find that one single Double Turbo Energy. Yeah, let's see exactly how this plays out. So it will be the knockout with the route. So Kobe, unable to use this, but... I think this is the only strategy here. Oh, wait, oh, but Countercatcher counter plus Iono. I think this is the best play here yeah. for Paul. Paul's best shot. But with Buddy Catch and Refine in play, this yeah. is going to be a tall order to ask for. But never say never here, Chip. It's always possible. It is always possible. That deck is pretty thin for Kobe. Only one card drawn. And, but we know that Research is in the deck. Yeah. So if he can just, he can probably just about guarantee it, honestly. The Double Turbo Energy is in the deck, so... Yeah, but there's no way to search it, and it's only that one copy. Yeah, but if you have less than seven cards, and or Let's less see. than nine cards, really, you Three, can just research, six. guarantee it. Oh, or that's boss's, boss's orders, orders yep. works as well. Bring up one of those low HP Pokemon and just take the KO. Here we go. Kobe Kawasaki finds a way to send this to a game three. Yeah, not a lot of time left, but that was such an interesting back and forth game. See, even at the end there, routes that we weren't even expecting able to get there. The boss's orders to close things out. 
unfortunate game one there may cost what seemed pretty favorable throughout that matchup. Once Kobe got his board established, felt like he was just in control of the game from that point on. Yeah, Paul, just that, that game kind of slipped away from him. He had a little bit of a chance there, but Buddy Catch Galay just got set up. Uh, Paul was not able to target down Kobe's support Pokemon like he was able to in game number one, and that's really what led to Kobe being able to get his board established, being able to thin his card, uh, uh, his deck of those bad cards, like the battle VIP passes, um, like the useless Pokemon, like the Manaphy and things like that. Just get those out of the deck so you don't draw into them. Uh, made it much, much better for him. And with only eight minutes remaining here in game number three, I have to imagine that a tie is going to be the most likely outcome. We'll see what happens, though. Playing fast, though, we're already drawing our hands. We're already getting down to this match. Let's see a quick replay of that crazy game two that we just got out of. Cleavor got in there. That's not really a Pokemon I was expecting to put in as much work, but yeah. Route's a good attack. We've seen dealing more damage for your opponent's bench Pokemon always a solid effect. Yeah, especially whenever that uh, the Flapple has been prized. You know, that's that's really Kobe's best play as an attacker whenever you're not able to utilize reversal energy. Yeah, and the Cleaver was great, too, because unlike Flapple, you're not getting knocked out to something like that Pidgeotti X as yes, well. Yes, that's so. true as well, yeah. Lots of benefits. Cleavor, the MVP. We didn't even see. So, oh, and look at that. The Skull Whoa, Villain is in the prize on. cards. That is really bad for Kobe. That is, like, I mean, really, really bad. So now there's no way to one-hit KO a Charizard EX. So if Paul just gets a Charizard set up, there's a chance that that could just sweep the game. You absolutely need to be playing very quickly here for either of these players uh, if you want to have a chance to close things out and win. And maybe I wonder if Kobe thinks in this position is even worth playing aggressive into this position, or do it's I try true. and just lock up the tie, lock up the one match point, draw a bunch of cards, make sure you put enough yeah. Pokemon in play so your opponent doesn't bench you out. And a big miss there off that mysterious tail. This is your one turn window, and, and this hand is not even looking that good to follow up. Really wanted to find another battle of the IP pass off of that. So who knows? It's these little things like not getting. Incredible setups, and speaking of an incredible setup on your first turn, yep. Arvin is going to secure that Forest Seal Stone and the Rotom V. Great, excellent way to kick things off. Going second for Paul at Game 3. Yeah, such a strong combo. Arvin for the VIP Pass, and then VIP Pass getting you a Pokemon V that can use the Forest Seal Stone. I mean, yeah, it's, it's such a, a powerful use of the cards available in the format. It makes me think back to, you know, before Rotom was played in the Charizard decks, you know, we were playing things like Entei V. Yeah. You know, what were we thinking, man? The, <laughs> the Rotom is just so good for this deck. Oh, is Forest Seal Stone prized? It might already be in the hand. Oh, it might be prized, actually. It might not be available at this point. So we are just going to see the battle VIP pass get played down. Is actually going to be that mysterious tail Mew. We did see. I'm thinking about it uh, at least. Yeah, it is one of those things where we saw how low Pokemon were, uh, or rather how low energy counts were towards the end of that game. When you use that, Mew wasn't even really used in that game a lot. I mean, there's a few times it was utilized, even <laughs> considering getting Radiant, Radiant Charizard. Charizard. I'm not sure. Not sure I'm in that camp necessarily. I think we just want to. Yeah, Combustion set up Blast here. would have to use five of your six energy cards that you play. So I don't know that that's worth committing to. Yeah, I wonder what Paul's. Uh, yeah, Paul's kind of in the tank here a little bit. Maybe worried about one single Charmander being KO'd. I don't think that's something that Kobe would realistically be able to pull off. So, yeah, as it is though, just gonna play things slow. Can go for the call for family. All right, yeah. this this actually is pretty solid. Yeah, maybe just wanting to ensure a second Charmander comes down for some reason. He's yeah, still going for the Radiant Charizard, though. Okay, okay. It's probably not bad to use at some point in the game, but you probably don't need it this early. Ultra Ball is in the hand. Yeah, as it stands, four and a half minutes left. Yeah, it's, it looks like this game is probably not going to finish now. I was curious to see if, we, see if we would see the Ultra Ball get played first, just to fit a Pokemon out. Kobe's still getting rewarded, does find level ball. And that means Curlia can come online, and Ultra Ball afterwards can grab any Pokemon out of the deck. Yeah, and this can maybe find something like the Flapple. You know, it only has 80 HP. Put that into your hand, then use Ultra Ball to discard that, so you kind of, you know, deal with two P-Doves with one ball, right? Okay. <laughs> 
you know, I, I respect the effort for it. I I, that, it. Maybe it was a little too much effort, honestly. <laughs> I feel like I was trying a little too hard there. But uh, you had we, the P-dubs, <laughs> but the ball was sort of where yeah. it fell off a little bit. <laughs> we're not throwing rocks at P-dubs. No, here. no, okay. we're not. We're, yeah, not. We're, we're against that. We are, on, we are on this peaceful broadcast. Pokemon traders yes. here. We do see another Zerua come out. Uh, Ultra Ball in hand. I don't know that there's too much you want to discard in this hand, however, is Kobia. Definitely a couple of reversal energies you don't really love to see hit the bin. Just check through the deck again. It is just going to be another Ralts coming down into play. But who knows? Three minutes left to play if Charizard just does really quick turns where they just go quick search, boss's orders, play boss, and then tax over and yeah. over again. Even then, though, it's just it's, it's so pretty hard. tough. It's pretty tough. And this is oh. why playing Radiant Zard is just so tough yeah. because now he's just going to sit in the active spot. He has a three retreat cost that's so hard to move this Radiant Charizard. Yeah, Paul plays one copy of Switch. I mean, probably kicking himself a little bit here. It looks like it's just going to be, is it literally just going to be instant charge, draw three? Wow. It is. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> Not really what you want to be doing with three minutes left on the clock when you really need matches to finish up. Yeah. Two and a half minutes left. No one's even attacked yet <laughs> up to this point. Yeah, not really feeling like this one's going to complete. But, you know, these players don't, I guess they do, if they ask the judge, know exactly how much time is left. You know, can't fault them for playing it out, just seeing exactly what would have happened. Never know if there's some sort of gentleman's agreement in play. I have to imagine at this point, probably not. A tie is okay. Uh, as far as making day two is concerned, a tie is can basically the same as a loss, right? But, you know, these players are both competitors. They want to make it into top eight if they can. So even picking up one single match point, you'll take it. There is the Iono. Both refinements being used, and we're down to less than two minutes. So these players will go through the actions, and it's just going to be a pass. And I think Kobe understanding that the Scoville and being prized means yeah. this game is, matchup is probably unfavored if it's played normally. So just going to pass it up, capitalize on that Radiant Charizard, sitting in the active spot. And Paul is just sitting here wondering, what do I even do in this position? Yeah, probably use instant charge. <laughs> and that's about it. Got to find the one switch. Oh, he's going to use research. OK. Discard the hand, draw seven new cards. Right. What else is there available? Is there rare candy Charizard? No, nothing. Just Pokemon Energy, Stadium cards. A Rotom is charging up a lot. That guy might be at full battery at this it's point. It's true. It's true. I'm actually kind of surprised to see that Paul attached the energy to the Charmander right here. Maybe should have attached it to the Pidgey because then there's a world if you research and draw rare candy Pidgeot, you can use the switch and then attack with your Pidgeot right away, take a prize card. Mm -hmm. Very possible indeed. So we are under a minute remaining in this game number three. I mean, I was just, I really wish we could see a game three for this ship, though, because if we really saw two games like that. The way this is shaping two, up, though, I, I mean, I guess the fact that the Sco villain is prized yeah. is what would be the big question mark in this game. I mean, the board set up almost perfectly here for Kobe, but yeah, I mean, it's true. the fact that off of this Azuru, Skull Villain's not grabbed, yeah. Paul's got to know, right? It 100% has to be prized. Yeah, definitely a safe assumption at that point. And it looks like Kobe's actually going to go on the offensive here, something we have not seen yet due to the prize cards. That Flapple coming into the active spot and hitting for 100, setting up for a two-hit knockout on this Radiant Charizard. He's putting in work for sure. He's... Uh, Dealing some damage, we finally got to see him shine in the one game that he was not in the prize cards. And uh, Paul is now officially turn zero. And yep, these players are going to acknowledge there's no way we're finishing this third game. It will be a draw between both of these competitors. They've got one more round yep. to win in. Both of these players need to win their final match to secure themselves a spot in day two. And with how the field is looking, with the level of competition, it's still no easy feat. Yeah, well played from both players. I, mean, I liked seeing Paul's adjustment to what Kobe was playing, right? Using those bosses' orders and taking out the Curly as targeting down the draw power was definitely really smart. Wasn't really able to do it as easily in game number two. And yeah, things just set up perfectly, honestly, for Kobe at the end of that second game. We got to see his Dex strategy on full display. And I gotta admit, Ethan, I'm really hoping that we can see more from Kobe in our tournament tomorrow. Hopefully he can, he can close out that last round with a win. Well, this game one was Pretty much all, Paul. This is what happens with the deck sometimes. You're playing lots of energy cards. If you can't get refinement set up, kind of get your board wiped.
got things knocked out. And then in this game number two, Kobe, even though he had a pretty slow start, we still saw the sort of the end of game one. There was no energy cards in play. I was able to finally get a lot of refinement curlias into play, get these Zoroarks transformed, and Scoville in that MVP, the super spicy breath to one hit knockout Charizard. Getting in there, Chip, getting in there. He got in there, got the KO. I mean, Cleavor, you know, was a part of the equation there as well. The the slow bro was a big threat on the bench, forced Paul to use counter catcher to KO that. So really, we got to see action from just about everyone. That buddy catch Gallade being a big deal in the matchup as well. We saw Paul trying to make use of everything in his deck. We saw heat tackle the KO. The whole line came the in, man. Villain, the Charmeleon <laughs> combustion took a knockout. Yeah, everyone was working together in this game. It's great to see these two decks clash into each other and uh, also both players still having a chance. Whether win or lose, they were both going to still have a chance to make it in a day two, but being at 6-1-2, and two, every match point you get matters. It's all relevant towards that goal of not just making top eight, but as we sort of talked about at the beginning of the show, once you start making into top 32 and above, the prizes start to really scale heavily. It's $10,000 for first place, but even top 32 is walking away with $1,000. That's yep. Pretty important money, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I mean, travel to these events is not cheap, right? So anything you can walk away with, it feels pretty good. So uh, yeah, unfortunate we didn't get to see that game come to fruition. Would have been interesting to see how it played out. I mean, Kobe honestly probably just loses with the Scoville and prize. Paul gets too much mileage out of one single Charizard EX, and uh, yeah, Kobe probably wouldn't have been able to do much there. But as it stands, a tie. Both these players coming away with at least something, one single match point. Wow, what a match. Definitely a lot to sort of reel back from that indeed. Still got plenty of Pokemon to play though. Today we've got one more round and then of course the action continues tomorrow where we'll be crowning a regional champion. But for now, we're gonna sort of reflect and see how the leaderboards are looking for both EU and NA. Hopefully we'll be able to pull that up, take a look and see how things are playing out. Now lots of these players are competing, some players Still in contention for day two, but there's a good amount of players here that have sort of fallen off a little bit. Ian Robb played Garatina again, but started out two wins, four losses. Has oh, officially wow. dropped out of the tournament. Will not be competing in day two, and he's our number two NA player. So this just kind of shows, no matter how good you are on the leaderboard, things happen in Pokemon, nothing yep. is ever guaranteed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anyone can show up to a tournament and have a bad day. Every single one of the 16 players on this list has definitely had events where they've you know, had bad starts dropped out early on and not been able to, to quite finish things off. But yeah, one of the things I've really liked to see from our leaderboard is just how things have progressed. We see the little arrows indicating, you know, who's increased since our last tournament, who's decreased in points. And these are championship points that players are earning at these regional championships, also points they've earned at international championships, and then even local tournaments, league cups, uh, league challenges awarding these players points, causing some of the movement here on the leaderboards as well. I'm interested to see how everything shapes up here, especially for Europe. We're going into EUIC, so you know a lot of these players are going to be here gonna be at this event. going to be a lot of movement as well on this leaderboard after EUIC, I have to imagine. I mean, even a lot of movement recently. We see the Cameraman brothers sitting atop the whole 